Well, gentlemen, thank you for being here uh, for a few minutes to talk about a particular bill and maybe a couple of other things, General, if you don't mind. Sure. We'll start, though, with House Bill 229. Yes. Uh, Representative Sandy Overly. This is about human trafficking, mm -hmm. and Kentucky has human trafficking legislation on the books and has been for some time, mm -hmm. strengthened in 2013. But what does this bill seek to do that current law doesn't mm -hmm. allow? Well, first, we have some of the strongest laws on human trafficking across the country, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, but we see some alarming trends. Uh, right now, uh, reports of human trafficking have to be reported to the Cabinet for Health and Family Services, and what we're seeing is about a 50% increase in reports every single year. And what that means is people are finally starting to wake up and realize how much is out there. My concern is only 10% of those reports result in any type of criminal investigation. So what we're trying to do in the Attorney General's office is to take responsibility. I want to be a part of this solution. I want to be a part of better combating human trafficking. So what we're asking is, let us get directly involved. Let us take our resources, our investigators, our prosecutors, and make sure that we're finding these victims. We're pulling them out of uh, sexual slavery, um, and oftentimes we're talking about children. Mm -hmm. uh, being the dad of a five and a six-year-old, that's, that's pretty important to me. And Secretary Brown, it's not just sex sl slavery, but it's also labor. Uh, that that's a big uh, part of what you're seeing now is that this indentured servitude evolving. Well, that's one of the keys. Uh, people have a, a set view, almost a stereotype in their mind, of what human trafficking is, when in reality it takes a number of different forms, and labor is one of the most common ones, and, and particularly among some of our foreign nationals, where people come and it's not necessarily what people would think about prostitution or out on the street. That does exist but it goes on a number of other forms. And the Attorney General's office is really uniquely equipped to deal with this. We have tremendous electronic and cyber crimes ability, many of which cross over to this area. We have investigators, and not only that, we have special prosecutors. This would give us statewide jurisdiction to go anywhere and attack it wherever we can find it. And for it to do a lot, it certainly on paper looks like very little. A three-line <laughs> piece of legislation, which is rare in the Kentucky yes. General Assembly, uh, to have concurrent jurisdiction with Commonwealth's attorneys and county's attorneys in these prosecution yes. of these human trafficking cases. What do the prosecutors think about your mm -hmm. collaboration with them? Do they feel threatened or they think it to be a compliment to their efforts? Well, I think they think it's a compliment because we're good partners. Uh, right now we work with Commonwealth and county attorneys all across the state. We also perform their back office functions through our uh, Prosecutors Advisory Council. Uh, specific prosecutors out there, including uh, Tom Wine in Jefferson County, is very supportive, and he has some of the, um, uh, some of the best resources uh, on his own, but he certainly sees uh, the need for us uh, to help in this. Uh, across the state, we've talked to folks, and, and we're seeing, we're seeing uh, only support out there. And uh, this bill's passed through the House. It passed 92 mm -hmm. to 0. It passed with, with people from both sides of the aisle who are seeing that this is a, a good thing. In fact, um, uh, Jeff Hoover, the minority leader, uh, was the one who made the motion to move it uh, out of committee. So uh, we're excited about the possibilities here. We're excited about how many people we can help, how many children and victims we can save. Uh, we just want to be put to work. I understand that it has, of course, it is in the possession of the Senate. Mm -hmm. It has been assigned to the Judiciary Committee as of the 29th of January, but it not has not had a hearing yet. Does that concern you that we are, at the time that we tape this interview, day 31, into the session with a budget looming and other big mm -hmm. ticket items that this may get left behind? Well, we're not concerned yet because the budget itself takes up so much time and so much oxygen. We see a lot of bills move year to year after that. Uh, but this is a nonpartisan uh, bill that would do good things for people. So what we'd like to see is it for it to move as, as quickly as we can so we can get to work. I mean, once this bill passes, the Attorney General's office can go to work. We can investigate more of these. We can help more of the victims, and we can put some really bad people uh, behind bars. What would be the opposition <coughs> to this, Secretary Brown, from other prosecutors maybe who are not on board? What would they think would be threatening to them with this piece of legislation? Well, I really don't know of any who are not on board. And I think what, what people have to realize about our local prosecutors is they have to take what falls in their lap every day. Something happens this afternoon, they have to take that case to their grand jury, they have to prosecute it. Sometimes they don't have, honestly, the time or the resources to go into the type of background investigation mm -hmm. it takes to right. get one of these cases ready to bring to trial. And 
they have to focus on what, what is going on. If there's a murder, if there's a heinous crime right mm -hmm. then, that takes their immediate attention, and it should. We have the, uh, luckily and fortunately, we have all the resources necessary to step into that gap and do it when they, when they simply are not available in, to. Including cyber crimes. That's mm -hmm. right. But I would think cooperation of the victims would also be very crucial here. And if they are under these immigration uh, standings, they may feel less uh, like they can pursue criminally. Is that part of the reason why these investigations are stalled on many fronts, or are there other factors? Well, communication with victims is critical, particularly since a lot of times we deal with uh, foreign nationals and some other folks. But keep in mind, the Attorney General's office has a very sophisticated victim advocacy group. Mm -hmm. We reach out to children. We reach out to seniors. They have very strong connections with victims at groups uh, across the Commonwealth and indeed across the nation, including, uh, for instance, Catholic Charities in Louisville, which is mm -hmm. a leader in, in going out and finding out some of these victims. We're able to relocate them mm -hmm. on occasion. We are able to get hold of interpreters, which is also an issue. So I think that we're uniquely qualified to step into this gap. And to that point, General, that the legislation, particularly in 2013, mm -hmm. did enable that these victims of human trafficking yes. were diverted to social services. Yes. And that they weren't victimized further by the criminal justice yes. system. And what you're trying to do wouldn't impede that original goal. Uh, now, in fact, I think we can, we can do even more in that area because in the Attorney General's office, we can take something from our cyber crimes unit where we can track this online. Uh, to some of our other investigators, through our prosecutors, all while our victims' advocates are helping uh, those victims. That 2013 legislation, some of the best legislation I think this legislature's ever passed, where uh, some of these girls who may be taken between the ages of 13 and 15, that we're not able to pull out of this crime and this life until they're 18 or 19, they're not criminals, they're victims. And I'm glad that in this Commonwealth we treat them that way. The budget that's been proposed so mm -hmm. far, uh, I would say you would say it's unfriendly, perhaps, it, to it, your office. If yeah. those cuts proceed as proposed by the governor, how would that impact your ability to do and perform the functions of House Bill 229 should they become a reality? If that budget proposal becomes a reality, uh, it is going to have stark consequences that ultimately make Kentucky less safe for our families. Uh, it'll have consequences before we even get to this on our ability to pull pedophiles off the street. You know, right now, we are on pace to triple the number of child sex offenders that this office pulls on the, off the street. It's, this budget is going to compromise that ability. It's going to compromise our ability in our special prosecutions unit, uh, public integrity. You know, we, in the end, are the ultimate watchdog uh, of, of state and local government. It's going to get in the way of our ability to do that. Uh, we're one of the few offices out there that's battling scams uh, day to day. And when you look at $3 billion stolen from seniors last year alone in the United States, it's going to get in the way of our ability to do that. In the end, our governor's priorities in this budget, uh, he said we're to invest in law enforcement, not to cut prosecutors, and to support um, uh, those who protect us. That's everyone in the attorney general's office. So what I'd ask this legislature to do is uh, make sure those priorities are applied consistently. Let us go to work, and, and I think we will do, and they will see results um, of an amazing job protecting families. There's one other thing our office does, um, and that's we bring value back to the Commonwealth. You cannot put a value on protecting families, but our office returns dollars to the Commonwealth. We announced that we'll be returning $17.5 million uh, for this uh, General Assembly to allocate during the next biennium. That's on top of everything we bring back to consumers. We just had a settlement with HSBC. So people who were wrongfully foreclosed upon are finally going to have relief there. We saved $230 plus million to ratepayers uh, in increases that were requested. So that's money in, in your and my pocket that's not going to our electricity or our water bill. You know, we work every day to help people, and there was one other settlement I was really proud of over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, we got money back for veterans. Uh, there was a predatory pricing uh, lending uh, issue out there, and we returned over 1.3 million uh, to our veterans. That's the good work this office does.